On the night of July 9, 1958, in a remote corner of Alaska, Earth witnessed one of the most extreme natural disasters in recorded history. It wasn't just a tsunami, it was a mega tsunami, and it created a wave so tall it remains unmatched to this day. Welcome to Latuya Bay, a narrow fjord surrounded by steep mountains and ancient glaciers. From above, it looks peaceful, serene, even beautiful. But deep beneath its waters lies one of the most dangerous geological fault lines on Earth, the Fairweather Fault. At exactly 10.15 p.m. the ground shook violently. A magnitude 7.8 earthquake rocked the region, dislodging an estimated 30 million cubic meters of rock from the side of Mount Latuya. The massive landslide crashed into the narrow bay with unstoppable force, and what followed was beyond imagination. The sudden impact of rock into water acted like a giant piston. It displaced an enormous volume of water in an instant. The result? A vertical wall of water that raced away from the impact site at frightening speed and shot up the opposite mountainside to a height of 1,820 feet. That's 524 meters. Taller than the Empire State Building. Taller than most skyscrapers on Earth. The wave didn't just flood the bay. It climbed the mountain, scraping off soil, trees, and everything in its path. To this day, the mountainside remains bare a scar carved by the tallest tsunami wave ever recorded. Three small boats were inside Lituya Bay that night. One of them, the Badger, was manned by Howard Ulrich and his seven-year-old son. They noticed the water behaving strangely. It started to swirl, then rose sharply. In the distance, they saw something impossible, a wall of water growing larger and larger. Ulrich made a split-second decision. He turned the boat directly into the wave, what happened next was like riding a mountain of water. The whole bay was moving, he said later. It lifted us up like an elevator. Then we shot forward like a rocket. Amazingly, he and his son survived. Their boat was thrown across the bay but remained afloat. They were lucky. One of the other boats sank. Two people died and were never found. The aftermath inside the bay was surreal. Entire forests along the shore were stripped clean. Trees hundreds of years old were torn from the ground and tossed like twigs. Massive logs floated in the bay, along with rocks and shredded vegetation. The air smelled of salt, mud, and destruction. Scientists arrived a few days later. When they saw the barren mountainside, they were stunned. After precise measurements, they confirmed what no one thought possible. The wave reached a height of 1,120 feet, the tallest tsunami in modern history. Unlike the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami or the 2011 Japan Tsunami, this one wasn't caused by oceanic tectonic plates shifting underwater. It was caused by pure mass and gravity, a rock slide smashing into a confined bay, amplifying the energy into a wave of destruction. The scientific term is splash wave, but that sounds far too gentle. What happened in Latuya Bay was more like a liquid explosion, a natural event with the force of a nuclear blast. In the days that followed, news of the Latuya Bay event spread among geologists like wildfire. Few had ever heard of a tsunami so tall. Many were skeptical, until they saw the aerial photos and tree-line evidence for themselves. Trees were snapped clean hundreds of feet above the water. The landscape looked as if a giant had taken a blade and shaved the mountain bare. Entire slopes once covered with thick forest were now raw earth. The event forced scientists to reconsider what they thought they knew about tsunamis. Until then, most believed that large tsunamis could only be created by undersea earthquakes or volcanic eruptions. But Latuya Bay proved another terrifying possibility. Landslides, especially those involving millions of tons of rock falling into a confined body of water, could be just as destructive. This phenomenon is now known as a landslide-generated tsunami, or mega-tsunami and it behaves differently from typical ocean tsunamis. It doesn't just travel outward across the sea. It explodes upward, then crashes down with devastating vertical energy. And while Lituya Bay is remote, other parts of the world are not. Scientists now monitor areas like volcanic island slopes, glacial lakes, and narrow fjords with steep cliffs, because under the right conditions, history could repeat itself. The Lituya Bay mega tsunami is not just a terrifying story from the past. It is a warning to the future, a reminder that sometimes it only takes one landslide in just the right place to unleash the tallest wave the world has ever seen. And this hunt was only the beginning. The wave was gone within minutes, but the world it left behind would never be the same.
After the 1,120-foot mega tsunami swept through Latuya Bay on July 9, 1958, the landscape was changed forever. Where thick forests once stood, there was nothing but bare rock. Where green slopes used to greet the sea, there was now a gaping scar reaching halfway up the mountainside. For the survivors, time seemed to stop. Howard Ulrich and his son drifted in silence, still on board the Badger surrounded by shattered logs, debris, and an eerie quietness. In the distance, the other surviving boat slowly emerged. But of the third boat and the Sunmore, there was no trace. Two lives gone without a sound. The U.S. Geological Survey arrived days later, flying in by small plane and helicopter. What they found stunned them. The high watermark was measured by the limit of torn trees, a clean line reaching over 1,100 feet above sea level. This wasn't just a big wave. It was the biggest wave ever observed by humans. The scientists realized something frightening. If this event had happened near a populated coast, thousands, possibly tens of thousands, would have died. But because Latuya Bay was so isolated, the damage was limited to a handful of boats and a handful of lives. Still, what they learned changed science forever. Before 1958, the idea of a tsunami being caused by a landslide was not well understood. But the Latuya Bay event forced a rethinking of tsunami science. It proved that a massive rockfall into a narrow body of water could unleash energy on the same scale as a nuclear blast. Imagine millions of tons of rock falling in seconds, turning calm seawater into a weapon of unimaginable power. Today, events like Latuya Bay are known as mega tsunamis. They're different from regular tsunamis, which travel across oceans after tectonic shifts. Mega tsunamis explode upward often in narrow bays or lakes and rise to terrifying vertical heights. Scientists now keep a close eye on places that could experience similar disasters. Volcanic islands like La Palma in the Canary Islands glacier-filled lakes in Greenland and Himalaya steep fjords in Norway and British Columbia all it takes is a sudden collapse, a landslide, icefall, or rock burst to trigger another monster wave. In fact, it has already happened again on a smaller scale. In 2015, in the remote Ton Fjord of Alaska, a 200 million ton landslide created a 600 foot wave that ripped through the fjord. Much like Latuya Bay, no one was there to see it, but satellite images later revealed the scars. The risk is real, and it's growing. Climate change is rapidly melting glaciers, weakening mountainsides, and making these events more likely. Some scientists believe that in the next few decades we could see another mega tsunami, possibly one far more deadly. And yet, Latuya Bay remains the most powerful warning nature has ever given. Even now, more than 60 years later, that bare scar on the mountain remains visible, a permanent reminder of the wave that reached the sky. For Ulrich, survival meant more than just luck. He dedicated his life to sharing the story, hoping others would listen. It happened fast, he said. No time to think, just react. And somehow, we were still here. Latuya Bay was a fluke of geology, a rare event. But what if it hadn't been? What if that wave had struck a city? What if it had happened in Tokyo, San Francisco, or Naples? Latuya Bay was a warning, a preview, a glimpse of what Earth can do when the conditions are just right or just wrong. In a matter of seconds, the sea turned violent, the mountain collapsed, and the tallest tsunami in human history was born.